morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Josiah. Welcome to Life Church. Here are this week's news and events. During Thanksgiving week, the church office will be closed Wednesday, November 23rd through Friday, November 25th. There will be no church service on Wednesday night. There will also not be a Bible and brunch on Wednesday morning. Hey students, do you like fire? Well, on November 30th at 7 p.m., we are gonna have a s'mores night. So bring your friends for an outside service as we roast marshmallows, play games, and finish out our series, The God We Serve. Don't miss out, it's gonna be lit, pun intended. Ladies, be sure to mark your calendars for Saturday, December the 10th at 9 a.m. We'll join together for the holiday cookie exchange. There'll be praise and worship, teaching, and then after cookies and coffee. Each lady will bring two dozen of holiday cookies and drop them off. While there's a time of praise and worship and teaching in the sanctuary, Santa's elves will be rearranging the trays so each lady takes home an assortment of holiday cookies. I can't wait to taste everyone's cookies. This past week, Life Church presented the October Teacher of the Month Award to Samantha Arnold at Perry Middle School. Because of your generous giving, Samantha was blessed with a certificate and a gift basket containing a coffee mug and $25 gift card from Morning by Morning. That's all for this week's edition of News and Events. Here comes Pastor Tim. I'm Pastor Josiah, praying that you are equipped, encouraged, and encounter the Lord this morning. God bless. When are we doing this? I'm like, it was up there, but... Uh, Thanksgiving schedule this week. The office will be open Monday or Tuesday. If you need something from the office, call us Monday or Tuesday. We'll be off uh, the rest of the week observing the Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, we're going to be with our families. We hope that you're with your families and hope everybody has a great and healthy and safe week. Uh, you saw the tailgate party recap video if you were paying attention or if you're in here. Hey, we had a great time. How many of you showed up to the tailgate party? Praise the Lord. We had a good time. It was cold, but, uh, but it was good. We made a lot of noise. We had some people. I know that there were at least two that came in uh, that we were outside making noise and people just stopped by. So we're, we're excited about that. And that's why we did it. We just wanted to, uh, to let people out here know we're doing something. I keep getting news all the time. People coming up to me saying, listen, I don't know what's going on at that church, but you guys are doing something. Every time we drive by, something's going on. You guys, you know, it's either updating the building or you're doing something in a field or we read about you in the paper doing something. That's what we want. We want to be a blessing to this community and you make it possible. You help us to do all of those things. So we're excited. Uh, you saw the, the missions recap video. We had 10 of us that went to Savannah. We left at 530 yesterday morning. 
Drove all the way to Savannah, uh, worked all day, got back at 7 o'clock last night. Uh, because of your giving, we were able to go to Savannah and do that. We were able to help LifeBridge Ministries, Pastor Jonathan, Brian, and Ms. Sharon, uh, pack food boxes. Uh, I think we packed over almost 60 food boxes. Is that right? Something. And, uh, and we saw, uh, we got to have a church service with them and pray for people. We also sorted some clothes, did some cleaning. Uh, if you were on that mission strip yesterday, would you stand up? Go ahead, stand up. Go ahead, stand up. All right, give them a big hand, would you? I know there's more of them. Some of them are probably out in the lobby or down there with the, helping with the food or something. But we had 10 of us went down there, and it was a good time. And this is the reality. This is why we did what we did. Three people gave their heart to the Lord yesterday. All right, so it's worth all the efforts. Amen. Uh, not only did we have 10 of us that went to uh, Savannah yesterday, we had three of our men that went to a, uh, a conference yesterday about security uh, for the church, helping us better secure, take care of things around here. Uh, we'll be bringing you more information about that to try to make our, our church and our, our children's section more secure uh, with our security teams. And then also, uh, Pastor Josiah and Miss Alona went to Griffin yesterday to a youth conference. So we had people from Life Church, from Griffin to Savannah and everywhere in between doing stuff. And that's what we want to do. We want to be an active and an outgoing church. And we're just grateful for, uh, for your giving that helps us make that possible. Um, tonight, we're getting uh, after service today, we will have our meal over here. So uh, how many first-time guests we got in the house? Lift your hand if you're first-time guest. Go ahead, lift your hand. Go ahead, don't be ashamed, first-time guest. I know there's more than that because I saw people getting stuff. But uh, make sure you fill out a connection card if you haven't done one already because um, we've got a free gift for you. And then also, just for you, we've got dinner today. <laughs> All right. No, seriously, we're, we're going to do our Thanksgiving potluck. Uh, I, went, I walked through there just a little bit ago, and it smelled delicious, and I can't wait. Uh, my wife, Miss Teresa, and some others, they have been working hard. Uh, we were here all day Friday setting up, so we just pray that you would be blessed. Uh, I'll give you more instructions at the end of service on how we're going to do everything. Uh, listen, we want to get the word first, then we'll worry about the turkey, all right? Let's get the word first, and then we'll, we'll do that. But because of the meal, we will not have equip groups tonight. Everybody say, no equip groups. No equip. All right, so we'll, we'll start meeting next Sunday with our equip groups, but we're going to take off tonight so that we can sit back there, we can eat, we can fellowship, and uh, go back and you can eat some more and fellowship. And Anyways, um, just kidding. All right. Hey, we want to worship the Lord with our giving so we can continue to do the things that uh, we're doing the middle school, uh, being able to bless the teacher, uh, the high school, I was able to share with uh, the high schoolers, uh, the football players, I should say, uh, this past Thursday, I got to do devotion with them. Uh, they were in the playoffs this week. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't make it to the next round of the playoffs, but uh, our, our Perry Panthers did a great job, had a great successful year this year, and uh, we were able to, to help them. I think we took them uh, Gatorade three times. I was able to do devotion with them twice, and again, your giving makes that possible. Uh, we're also doing some other things in the community. I think there was a slide up there where the Perry Ministerial Association next Saturday <coughs> will be doing a, um, or this coming Saturday, I should say, a tree lighting. And so uh, if you're going to be downtown doing some Black Friday shopping or something, or I guess that'd be Saturday, but anyhow, uh, go down there. They're going to they're gonna be uh, having a church choir singing, uh, preaching the message, and then lighting the Christmas tree downtown. So go down there and be a part of that and let people know that you're from Life Church and that, uh, uh, well, if you're kind to people and you're nice, <laughs> let people know you're from Life Church. If you're like some of those people on the Friday and Saturday after Thanksgiving, don't let them know you're from Life Church, okay? <laughs> all right, all right. Everybody ready to give this morning? How many of you need to give an envelope? Anybody need to give an envelope? We got one down front, one down low, going to get another. Anybody, 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 another? Okay, okay, nobody else. You guys, listen, you got to lighten up a little bit this morning. Some of you are just, I don't know, maybe the cold's got your face froze or something, man. S smile, Jesus loves you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hey, I'm just excited Miss Mary's back today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We missed you. Hallelujah. Not only are we glad she's back, not only did we miss her, but also I don't have to worry about what's going on on Facebook. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. We're getting it fixed, I promise. I promise we're working on it. Quinn says, she's here. Hallelujah. Glory.
glory to God. Hey, if you have your offering this morning, would you stand to your feet? And this is what we want you to do. We want you to put your offering in the hand of you and your spouse, or if you're uh, here by yourself or single, just put it in both of your hands. And, uh, and when we start the, the first song, you'll be able to bring your gift up, stick it inside our giving chest up here. Your giving makes it possible for us to, to spread the gospel, not only around the state, but around the world. Uh, we've got one of uh, our missionaries from the state of Georgia. Uh, he's a missionary to a, a country that I can't take, but uh, he's with us in service today. And we're just excited because of, of your giving, we're able to help people like that take the gospel to these countries and, and just uh, let people know that there's life and there's light. In Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. If you're ready to give, say, I'm ready. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that you bless each and every one. Bless the gift and the giver this morning. Lord, I pray that the seed that's sown today, that you would multiply that seed. Father, that we can do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask, imagine, or hope. Father, we want to reach more people, not only here in Perry, in Houston County, around the state of Georgia, but around the world. Father, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we're making improvements to our sound. We're making improvements to our technology for video, for Facebook Live. Lord, we're trying to do everything we can through through our podcast to get this message outside of these four walls. And Lord, I just thank you for it. Because of the people's giving, Lord, we're able to take trips. We're able to go and be a blessing to others. And Father, we're seeing the fruit of it come to pass. Lives saved, people transformed for the glory of God. And Father, we do it all for you. We love you, we thank you, and we give you praise. May you be uh, exalted this morning as we worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Good morning, church. Aren't you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Come on, let's praise him together. coming on the clouds he's coming on the clouds kings and kingdoms will bow down as broken hearts declare his praise for who could stop the lord almighty our god is the lion the lion of judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Oh, we praise you. So open up the gates. So open up the gates. Make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save. He's here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord? I'll sing our God. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. Come on, aren't you thankful that every knee, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord? God, we thank you, Lord that you have all power and all dominion, that you reign supreme. We thank you, Father. So who could stop? Who could stop the Lord Almighty? 
Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop? Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb. The Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world, His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. We bow before You. Come on, one more time, let's sing our God. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before Him. Come on, lift up your praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. This next song is a new song. It's called Authority. And it just talks about the greatness and the awesomeness of our God. And how when we call on the name of Jesus, because of what Christ did, we have access to the Father. Which means we have access to that power. Amen? There's a story in Matthew chapter 8 when there's a Roman centurion that comes and approaches Jesus. And he says, Jesus, I have a servant who's paralyzed. Can you come? And, and Jesus says, do you want me to come to him? And, and, the, and the Roman centurion says, if you just say the word, I know that he will be healed. And then Jesus responds to him, I haven't seen such faith in all of Israel. But what that means is if, if we just say Jesus, just say the word Jesus, things begin to change. Our circumstances begin to change. Amen. Come on, let's call on the name of Jesus right where you're at. Don't wait for us to sing it. Just call on the name of Jesus. Creation knows the voice that spoke into the void. The breath that brought the dust to light and sang the stars to form. The darkness fears your voice That drove it back before And though the night is long I know your light Will drive it back once more Sing one word One word from you things change on your authority and your word is true the things change on your authority just one word 
my fight is not my own. Its end is in your hands. I worship you because I know all things must bow to your command. Oh, one word from. Strongholds not be moved, will spirits not be silenced, and coward at his rule. For if my God is for me, then what have I to fear? For I will not deny him the glory that is his. Sing, will heaven, or will heaven not prevail? Strongholds not be moved, will spirits not be silenced, and cower at his rule. For if my God is for me, then what have I to fear? And I will not deny him the glory that is his. Oh, heaven will prevail, and strongholds will be will be silent and cower at his rule. I know my God is for me, so what have I to fear? For nothing will deny the glory that he sees. One word, one word from Heaven will prevail, and heaven will prevail, and strongholds will be moved, the spirits will be silenced, and coward at his rule, let's declare it, I know my God is for me, so what have I to fear, for nothing will deny him. 
the glory that he sees. Oh, thank you, Lord.
you love him this morning. Let him know you love him this morning. The name of Jesus. It breaks every yoke this morning. Hallelujah. There is a promise that points beyond my failure. There is a still voice to silence all my fear. Even the worst of my mistakes a miracles in the making a miracles in the making by your stripes i am healed with one touch i am made whole you have spoken and i know that it is and in the storm you are peace and your love won't let me go you have spoken and i know that it is so in every season in every season your purpose is unchanging and in every moment you're working for my good jesus the rock that never fails your kingdom will not be shaken your kingdom will not be shaken by your stripes i am here with one touch i am made whole you have spoken and i know that it is so in the storm in the storm peace and your love won't let me go you have spoken and i know that it is so Every word you say is true, my God. Your word is settled in heaven, it will be done. Father, let it be done. Yours is the kingdom forever. Your will be done, oh let it 
your stripes I am healed with one touch I am made whole you have spoken and I know that it is so in the storm you are peace and your love won't let me go you have spoken and i know that it is so sing you have spoken you have spoken and i know that it is so Hallelujah. Stay in an attitude of worship. Pastor Josiah said earlier, he was talking about the centurion. And he said, all you have to do is speak the word. All Jesus had to do is speak the word. Listen, I, I, we'll lay hands on those that need to have hands laid on, but I believe this. I believe that some of you, how many of you in here this morning would just say, listen, I've got a need. Hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. Say, I've got a need. Listen, the name of Jesus the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, heals. The name above every name, cast out. Listen, I believe right now, I was just down there and I was praying. And now hear what I'm getting ready to say. Stay in an attitude of worship and don't get offended. But what, what I heard the Lord say, he said, some won't receive because of an arrogant spirit. An arrogant spirit. When, when, when we get prideful, when we get, when we get to a place in our lives where we think, you know, you know, I can do it myself or it should be done this way or whatever, instead of allowing God to move. You know, that centurion, he says, listen, I, I can command thousands to do whatever. I can command thousands to go and attack worlds. I can command thousands to kill. I can command thousands, but not a single one of them can heal my servant. But at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every disease, Every sickness, every demon has to bow at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to sing that again. I love that song. But if you need, if you need someone to pray for you, if you need a touch in your body, uh, come on up here and, and, and let's, just, let's just pray and let's just sing that. If you need a touch in your body at the name of Jesus, we want to agree with you this morning for prayer. Pastor Josiah, go ahead. Thank you, Lord. By your stripes. I am healed with one touch. I am made whole. You have spoken, and I know that it is so. In the storm, you are peace, and your love won't let me go. You have spoken, and I know that it is so. By your stripes, I am healed. With one touch, I am a whole. You have spoken, and I know that it is so. In the storm, you are peace, and your love won't let me go. You have spoken, and I know that it is so. Your word, your word is settled in heaven, it will be done. Father, let it be done. 
what I want you to do. That's what I want you to do. Those of you that lifted your hand, we're going to sing that verse one more time. It's already settled in heaven. Do you understand that when Isaiah said, by his stripes, you are. And then Peter turned around and repeated it. And Peter said, by his stripes, we were. It's settled in heaven. It was done. I know we don't like to think about it this way, but I always think about when Jesus was on the whipping post. And that, that Roman centurion took back that cat of nine tails. And when he slung it, every time that thing hit Jesus and ripped off his flesh, whatever you're dealing with, it was taken right then. Jesus took it for you, and it was settled in heaven. So as they sing, I want you to declare, Father, whatever it is, whatever you're dealing with, I want you to declare right now, I am healed. My, my tumor has to go. Cancers have to flee. Bones have to be healed. In the name of Jesus, begin to declare right now. Begin to declare right now. Let it be done. Your word is settled in heaven. It will be done. Father, let it be done. Yours is the kingdom forever. Your will be bowed every eye closed every head bowed every eye closed listen I want you right now don't look around don't look around I want you to start examining your own heart I want you to start asking yourself if I died today do I know for a fact that I'd go to heaven ask yourself if I died today do I know without a shadow of a doubt that I'd go to heaven if I died right this minute do I know without a shadow of a doubt the next face I see would be Jesus? I want each one of you to examine your heart this morning. I believe the Spirit of the Lord is moving. It's settled in heaven. What that means is, listen, we don't believe in predestination, but God already knows your heart. He knows the decisions that you're going to make. And then this morning, the decision has to be made. Will I make Him Lord of my life? Or will I allow my pride to keep me from being saved so I'm gonna ask you right now every head bowed every eye closed you ask your own self am I right with God this morning if I died today would I go to heaven and if you're sitting there and you say pastor I don't know that I'm right with God I want you to as quickly as you can don't even think about it, I want you to come forward right now come forward right now if that's you and you say I'm not where I need to be with Jesus I don't know that if I died today I'd go to heaven but I want to know I want to get it right if that's you come right now don't wait don't think about it Come right now. God has wanted to change some people's lives in here today. God's wanted to change. Listen, we went to Savannah, and three people gave their heart to the Lord yesterday. I'm asking you today, don't leave this place if you're not right with Jesus. Anybody in this place, you say, Pastor Tim, if I died right now, I just don't know for sure that I'm right with God, but I want to know. I want to get my heart right with God this morning. If that's you, would you come right now? Would you come? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Don't be looking. Don't look. If that's you and you say, Pastor, I'm just, I'm, I'm embarrassed to step out. Nobody else is looking. I'm the only one that's got my eyes open. I'm looking around. If that's you, would you lift your hand up right now? Lift your hand up. I see that. I see that. I see that hand. Anybody else? You say, I'm not right with God, Pastor. Would you pray for me? If that's you, would you just lift your hand up? Lift your hand up if that's you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody repeat after me. Say this. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you today to come into my heart to be Lord of my life. I ask you today to forgive me of my sins. Wash me. Cleanse me. 
make me whole. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died for me, that He rose for me, that He hears me today. And I'm asking you, Father, that I would be born again, that I'm right with you, and I believe it right now. Because of my prayer and because of my faith, I believe that I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer this morning and you meant business with Jesus, before you leave today, please, please, please come see me. Don't run out there. There's plenty of food back there. I've seen the menu, okay? There's plenty of food back there. Would you come see me? I just want to pray for you. I want to get some information from you, okay? Hallelujah. Turn around and tell somebody you're blessed. Hallelujah. No, don't say you're blessed. We know you're blessed. Tell them they're blessed. Come on. Hallelujah. You can be seated. You just carry them down there. Praise the Lord. Some of you turned around and said, I'm blessed. We know that. You need to look at them and say, you're blessed. Because we're all blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got the sound working. Let's see if we can get the lights working. In Jesus' name, let there be light. All right, didn't work. I was driving home last night. I, well, I dropped everybody off. Uh, I, I, I was on a roll, okay? Let me just tell you, I was, I was feeling confident about myself. I, I told everybody, I said, we're going to leave at 5.30. We got a little bit of a late start yesterday morning. But I said, we're going to be back by 7.00. And Brother Eric told me, he said, Pastor, you, you pulled in the parking lot at 7 o'clock. I was feeling good. So I got everybody off the bus, and, and, uh, and, and we just drove two and a half hours, and uh, I had to go to the bathroom. And I said, I'm not going to unlock the church. I'm just going to jump in my truck. I live two miles down the road. I can make. So I'm going down the road, and the light's red, and there's like three cars in front of me. And as I'm approaching, I see that red light. I said, in Jesus' name, turn green. And that light turned green. I was hammering down, man. Woo, glory. God is good. Hallelujah. A merry heart doeth good like a message. How many of you are blessed? Hallelujah. So if you have your Bibles, go to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. We're going to be talking about are you barren or fruitful. Last week we discussed bearing fruit or being fruitful. I'm sorry, being, being fruitful. Being fruitful means that we must make sure that we stay connected to the vine. Um, I think it was... Might, might have been Miss V. Somebody was telling me. I can't remember who it was now. Was it you? About that? Okay. H grafting, uh, uh, how they would graft like an olive tree, uh, a branch of it in. And uh, I've never done it. I'd like to see it. I, I saw Mr. Miyagi do it years ago on Karate Kid. And, you know, they, um, but anyhow, I, I just, you know, we got to be grafted. We are grafted in. We are part of that vine. If you're born again, any, anybody in here that's Jewish, all right, so we're all Gentiles. We've been grafted in. We've become part of that vine. And so part of that is we need to stay connected to that vine. Listen, I don't care if you got to pray that prayer to make Jesus Lord of your life a hundred times. Just mean business. Because, listen, we don't know what tomorrow holds. But the problem with some people and the reason that some people are, are they, 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 they kind of feel like that wave that's tossed to and fro. Like, well, Pastor, today I believe that I'm saved, but then something happens in my life, and maybe I don't feel that way somewhere during out the, throughout the week. And the reason is is because we're not completely connected to the vine. See, when we're completely connected to the vine, we're, we're getting our nutrients from the vine. We're spending time in His Word. We're spending time with the author of the Word. We're, we're seeking after Him. But when we get to this place where we're always too busy going, and listen, people want to give the devil the satisfaction. The, the only thing that the devil has any power over is, is the power that you allow him to have. And when your schedule, when you're making your schedule and everything on your schedule is getting up, doing this, doing that, going to work, doing all these things, and you fill your schedule, and nowhere in there did you make time for God, that, that's where we get. The, the devil just wants to keep us so busy. So we need to make sure that we're staying connected to the vine, that we're getting the proper nutrients from that vine. Making sure you're in church. 
making sure that you got a Bible reading plan, making sure that you're spending time with God. I hear people tell me, they say, well, Pastor, my schedule's so busy, I pray in the shower. Do you really? I mean, is that, is that what you're thinking about when you're in the shower? I'm praying. Because I'm going to tell you something. When, when I'm praying, soap and water is not what I'm thinking about. I want to connect with Jesus. When I sit down and I talk to my wife, man, we're sitting there and we're, we're looking at each other. And we're, we're having conversation. She did that to me the other day. I, I got up early and I was drinking my coffee. I'd already read the, my Bible and, and I'd already spent some time with prayer. And she comes walking out. She sets her coffee down. And I jumped up and I said, I got to go. She goes, hold on. What about me? Oh, yes, honey. And I sat back down and we talked. All right. Listen, you got, we've got to make time for God. Don't think that, well, I'll work God into my drive time. I'll work God into my shower time. I'll work God into my... It just doesn't happen, folks. We've got to be intentional about spending time in the Word. We've got to be intentional about spending time with God in prayer. Then the other thing we talked about last week is we've got to shed those dead things. What are those dead things? You know what they are. Listen, if you're continuing to live in Eusta, some of you don't know what that means, but let me just tell you, used is gone, okay? It, you, you can't, you know, people come to me all the time. It, it's coming up on one year. I think in two weeks it'll be one year, right? One since we've been here. Uh, we, we came and I, I preached last Thanksgiving and just, I came for the food, but I, I came and preached last Thanksgiving and, just kidding. And then, uh, but, but it'll be one year since we moved here. And people still come to me and they say, well, pastor, we used to. And I just look at them and grin and I was like, used is gone. I can't, I can't change what I had for breakfast. I can't change the stupid joke that I told five minutes ago. Okay? I can't change the past. Used is gone. We're looking forward to what lies ahead. So we need to let go of those dead things. There's some things in your life that you can't change. Listen, some of you have been through some bad relationships. Maybe you've went through divorce. You can't change that, so quit harboring bitterness. Somebody's done you wrong. Somebody said some things about you that hurt your feelings. Listen, you can't change it. I heard a guy say sometime, he said, when you, when you hold unforgiveness in your heart, it's like drinking poison expecting the other person to get sick. It just doesn't happen. Let it go. I've had people that have done me wrong people that have cheated me out of money, people that have said things about me that are not true. I can't change that. i got to keep on moving forward. i got to let go of dead things. Like any tree, they've got to let go of the leaves of yesteryear so that they can grow new leaves for what lies ahead. Church, we got to let go and we got to move forward. God's got a greater vision for us. It's not that the vision that he had was bad. It's not that anything that Pastor Billy, Pastor Parker, Pastor Craig, any of them did was wrong. It's not. We're just moving into a new season. Aren't, aren't you glad that we're not riding camels to church and, and wearing long gowns and, 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 and sandals this morning? Quit living in the past. Start living for the future. Start asking God, what is it that God wants me to do? And start doing those things. Let go of those things that are dead. So this week I want to ask you this. If we're connected to the vine, if we're receiving the nutrients we need to receive, if we're letting go of those dead things in our life, then the question is, are you barren or fruitful? If, if I went out here to Lane's, What's that place called? Whatever. Yeah, somebody's pointing that way, but wherever that place is, if I go out there and this tree's got all kinds of peca uh, peaches, pecan, there you go, we'll have to get that up there. If, if this tree has got all kinds of peaches and this tree looks the same but it doesn't have any peaches, that one's not bar bearing fruit. It's unfruitful. I need to cut it down and I need to make room for a healthy tree. Everybody with me? So let's look at this. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. You got it? It's up on the screen. Hopefully you got it in your Bible. Luke chapter 13. I won't ask you to stand this morning. Hallelujah. Verse 6. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree 
planted in his vineyard, and he came seeing, seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. Father, I just thank you again for the opportunity to stand before this congregation. I thank you for the word of God that is truth, for every promise of the word of God that is yes and amen to the glory of God. Lord, help me to speak forth the oracles of God, to say the things that you've anointed me to say, and to do so, Father God, in the way that you would have me say it, that, that those that are here today would have ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to receive. And Father, we'll give you praise for it in Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is speaking in this parable about a, a fig tree that is planted in a, in a vineyard. And he says in here, he says, a certain man, the certain man is God. Okay? He says, and this man had a vineyard. The vineyard is the world. And the man planted a tree in his vineyard, and that tree is you and I. We are trees planted in the master's vineyard. We are planted for a purpose, not by chance. We are planted with a purpose. All of you have a purpose. Listen, we've been talking about this. We need to be equipped. We need to make sure we got vision. We need to understand purpose. All of you have a purpose in life. Listen, there's, there's no purple, purposeless people unless you choose to be. God has called us all. God has equipped us all. We are all created in His image. So we are planted for purpose. You are, you are planted to fulfill God's purpose in His vineyard. You are planted in this place to bear fruit. Have you ever just really asked yourself, why, why am I in Perry? Why am I at this church? Out of all the many churches, out of all the many towns, out of all the many places, why here? I ask myself that regularly. Lord, why Perry? I mean, we were in Cookville. We, you know, there were places we could have. Why Perry? Listen, God has a purpose. Now, listen, again, I, I said this for a reason. I'm not saying anything against anybody that was before me. We let go of those things. But you need to understand a couple things about this parable that Jesus is teaching. And, and, and we're going to look at the, what he's really saying. But for just a second of time, I want you to think about the last three years in your life, in this church, how things have went in the last three years. Don't answer, don't raise your hand, don't holler nothing out. Just ponder these things. Ask yourself, in the last three years, personally, have I been bearing fruit? Ask yourself, has this church, the last three years, been bearing fruit? Ask yourself, in the area that I'm in and the people that I associate with, are we bearing fruit? So Jesus goes on and he says right here, he says in John chapter 15, verse 1, he says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Jesus is the vine that we need to be attached to. God is the vine dresser. Then in verse 5, he says, I, Jesus speaking, I am the vine, you are the branches. Say, I'm a branch. You are the branches. He who abides is connected to, who gets its nutrients from, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. But without me, you can do nothing. We are the branches. As we discussed last week, when we're connected, abiding in the vine, when we're getting our nutrients, when, we, when, we, when we're praying, when we're seeking the word, when we're doing the things we need to do, letting go of those dead things, we will bear fruit. But if we're not doing those things, we can do nothing. 
Apart from God, I can do nothing. Clinging symbols, making noise, but bearing no fruit. Listen, I want to make sure. That, that's why we've got shirts that say you got to want a Colossians 3.23 because everything we do, we do is under the Lord, not as under men. you got to ask yourself. you got, you got to be able to ask, am I bearing fruit in my life? Am I in a church that's bearing fruit? And if it's not, why does it have anything to do with me? Am I doing my part? Am I associated with people that are bearing fruit? Are the people that I'm hanging around, are they doing something for the kingdom of God? Or are they just wasting my time and theirs? See, we got to know these things, folks. The days are getting close. And we got to understand, listen, we can't, we can't just sleepwalk through this life. In Luke, Jesus said God planted us and he sent his vine that we may grow from him and that if we are from the vine, that the vine dresser should expect some fruit from his vine. So God sent his son that we would come to know him, that we would surrender our lives to him, that we would be connected to the vine. And then in Luke chapter 3 verse 8, he says that we would bear fruit worthy of our repentance. See, the problem with so many churches and the problem with so many church people is that we go to church, we, we will pray a prayer similar to what I just prayed with you. Somebody will lead us in this prayer and we'll say, Lord, come into my heart, be Lord of my life. I don't want to go to hell. Please save me. We'll do that. Somebody will hand us a Bible or a certificate. We may even follow the Lord in water baptism. And then we find us a nice chair. And this is our Christian walk. And we bear no fruit. We come into the church on Sunday morning and we find somebody that looks a little different, smells a little different, dresses a little different. You haven't seen them before and they're sitting in your seat and you get offended. That's my seat. Are you the same one that's parked in my spot? Because we're not bearing fruit. We're not doing the things that we need to be doing. Listen, church, I'm trying to get you to understand some things. We need to bear fruit worthy of our repentance. God didn't save you to sit you. God saved you to send you. Let me say that again because five of you got it. God didn't save you to sit you. God saved you to send you. We got to do some things. It's time for us to bear fruit. Salvation and repentance of sin is not of our secure, for our security in heaven only, but to bear fruit. Jesus came to the children of Israel seeking fruit from their deliverance. Think about the children of Israel. They had been spared by God's mercy and brought out of Egypt, and yet they turned their back on God. They became stiff-necked. They were taken into captivity with the Babylonians, with the Persians, with the Medes. And at the point of his speaking, they were in, in, in bondage to the Romans. So we think about the, the children of Israel. They were in bondage to the Egyptians. And God makes a way to pull them out. They gotten so to the point where they were, they were, they were slaves to the Egyptians. They, they were in bondage. They were making their, their own uh, mud they were making their own bricks they were having to get their own stuff they started crying out to God God says okay Moses go in bring my people out so he brings his people out brings them through uh, the, the the Dead Sea on dry ground destroys the enemy that was following them brings them into the desert shows them a land promises them I will fight for you I will give you all that land all of the fruit in that land will be yours but because it wasn't going the way they wanted, they got stiff-necked. They began to turn their back on God. They began to grumble and complain. And a whole generation of them had to die off. And then Joshua comes and he says, my servant, uh, God's servant Moses is dead. God's called me to take his place. I'm taking the next generation. We're going across the Jordan and we're going to conquer this land. And everything was going good for a couple hundred years. Then they got complacent because they got where they were supposed to be. And they sat instead of sent. 
And as soon as they sat, we start reading about the book of Judges. How it was one sin after another sin after another sin after another sin until God again, he says, they're not getting it. And then once again, they end up in captivity. And then another generation comes. And then they same thing. And we see this cycle repeated over and over again. Can I tell you that we're living in that same cycle today? The people have been saved. That God has made a way. God has opened a door. We're living in a nation where people came over 250 years ago. They came to this great land. They came and God says, I will bless you. I will multiply you. You will bear fruit because you came with all the right reasons. I probably told you this before. My wife and I, we took our kids one time. We, we, we went to, to uh, Jamestown. And, and in Jamestown, Virginia, where they, where they came and they established the first colonies, the first place they built, before they built their house, the first place they built was a church. The second place they built was a church for the Indians. See, what we do is this. We build our church, and then we'll put a pastor in and tell him what to say, and then we'll build our house, and then we'll tell the pastor what to say, and then we'll, 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 we'll buy us a nice car, and then we'll tell the pastor what to say, and then we... And we're not bearing fruit. When the pastor says, hey, let's do some missions. Let's go out and reach the, the Indians. Let's go out and reach the people around us. I don't want to do that. Get another pastor. Just keep smiling. Keep grinning. Just keep, it's good. We're all good. I love you. What, what I'm trying to get you to understand is, is we got people right now, they're, they're in church, but they're in captivity. They're not bearing fruit worthy of their repentance. Jesus is asking, where is the fruit of your repentance? For all that my father and your father has done, where is the fruit? The Bible says in Luke 13, 6, he came seeking fruit on it and he found none. If Jesus came into this church this morning, would he find fruit? If Jesus was in your life. That's why I asked you earlier to examine your own heart. If Jesus was doing inventory in your life, would he find fruit? Or would he, would he find a tree that's fruitless? There's coming a day, church, and I believe sooner than we think, where God is coming back for those who are forgiven, those that have been set free, those that are healed, those that are bearing fruit, worthy of repentance God's coming back now understand this if you read your Bible if you understand some things that, that there's going to be and I'm not going to get into revelation and end time event that's what I'm not what I'm trying to do there will be a, a, a just like the the children of Israel there will be some that will get into the promised land on the first go around there are some that will be raptured taken away and then there'll be some that'll be left and you may have to go through the tribulation and maybe then you'll finally open up your eyes and say everything that that preacher said was true and maybe you'll go on the second low, but you're going to have to suffer a little bit. But you don't have to. Because God's made a way. He's made a way, and all you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord. Go to Titus chapter 3. Let's look at this. Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, verse 4 through 8. It says, But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. Let me read this again, verse 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Paul's writing to Titus, and he's telling them, he says, you need to affirm these things constantly everywhere that you go and proclaim the good news, everywhere that you preach. 
that those who have believed in God, those that have made Jesus Christ Lord of their life, they need to maintain good works because these things are profitable. See, we need to be careful to maintain good works, which is fruit. Our fruit is profitable for others. Those that went on the trip yesterday, it was Saturday. I'm sure they would have liked to have slept in because many of them worked all week. And yet they were up at at 4 o'clock in the morning to be here at 5.30 to drive two and a half hours. And when we first got there, I don't know about them, I won't speak for them, I'll speak for me. When I first got there, I was kind of like, okay, we're the only ones here. How much of an impact are we really going to have? I mean, I'll just be honest, I had to get there and had to kind of stir myself up a little bit. And we started making food boxes. And with with eight of us making food boxes, we were able to, to make almost 60 food boxes in 40 minutes. And I thought, we drove two and a half hours for 40 minutes of work, really? And then Pastor Jonathan said, oh, no, I got more for you to do. And then we started sorting clothes. I'm like, listen, we used to have a thrift store. My wife would tell you, I'll do a lot of things, but I hate going through somebody else's laundry. But in the name of Jesus... So we were sorting clothes, packaging stuff up. I said, all right, we're done with that. Now what? And he handed me a vacuum cleaner. I said, in the name of Jesus. Did he call my wife or what? I don't know. And the whole time I'm thinking, really? I mean, that we drove two and a half hours. Is this it? And then the service, at 2 o'clock they had a service and the people started coming in. And, uh, and we had already decided we were going to have a couple testimonies. I was going to get up and I was going to share my toast testimony. Randy Wilson was going to share his testimony. And um, uh, who was the other one? I forgot. Eric was going to share his testimony. And so we had already decided. That's, that's how the order was going to go. Well, I got there and I started playing DJ. I'm up in the sound booth and I'm doing music because they didn't have anybody to do music. So I'm up there and I'm controlling the microphone. So I'm at the back and Brother Jonathan gets up there and, uh, and, and he's doing, and he says, so we got a couple testimonies and he looks back at me and I said, and I point. So Randy Wilson gets up there and shares. Randy gets done and, and he turned, or no, it was Eric was first, wasn't it? Eric was first and then it went to Randy Wilson. And then he looked back at me and he's kind of like doing like that. And I pointed over there to Brandon and Brandon's going, fruit brother worthy of repentance and man he got up there and he shared his testimony i'm going to tell you nothing take nothing away from the other two guys but it was good and pastor jonathan preached the gospel five people went forward to have be prayed for three of them gave their heart to jesus it was profitable When they got done praying, we were, we were able to, they went out to their cars. We were able to take food and turkeys out and put them in their cars. We were able to see lives transformed. The two and a half hour drive back was a whole lot, man, in my mind. I mean, I was sitting up front. It was dark. These people don't know. When, you know, they're sitting there talking about this, this team up in Athens or whatever. I don't know. And, and I'm driving. I'm driving. And, and I mean, at one point, I'm weeping. I mean, I'm just, I'm driving down the road and I just, with tears in my eyes thinking about those three people. So we're going we're gonna to do some food boxes here. Uh, on, the, on the 28th, I'm going to go up to Macon. Uh, we're going to pick up a bunch of food from Convoy. We're going to come back here. There's going to be a group of people that are going to pack those boxes, and we're going to find 50 people to be able to bless with those food boxes. And, and at first, I was asking the Lord, I was like, is this really what we need to do? Because, you know, I can't fit all that food in my pickup truck. I said, Lord, we're going to have to rent a U-Haul, and we don't really have the money for it. And God supplied us with a truck. And then as I began to talk to people and tell people what we're going to do, they're like, you know, well, who's helping you? I said, well, I named off a couple people. They're like, well, I want to help. He's supplying laborers. Listen, I believe this, church. I want everybody to, real quickly, turn to your right. Everybody look at to your right. Turn, whichever, my right, your left, whatever. (laughs) Just look around. Look around. How many of you were here in January? Hold your hand up. All right, co- hold your hand up. If you were here in January, hold your hand up. Now look around again. See, put your hands down. What I'm trying to get you to understand is there's fruit. There are more here today that were here in January. 
some of it's new converts, some of it's some people that felt called to come here. But whatever the, 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 the reason that they're here, it's profitable. We need to continue on with what we're doing. The things we do for the middle school, the things we do for the high school, the things we do for missions, it's all profitable. When we do for others as unto the Lord, not ourselves, we will produce. When we do for others more than ourselves, we will produce fruit. James chapter 2, verse 17 and 18 says, thus also faith by itself, if does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith with my works. Listen, it's one thing to be working. It's one thing to be in, trying to do things in your own strength. It's another thing to be doing it as unto the Lord in his strength. You'll produce much more fruit. It is by our works, church, that we will bear fruit worthy of what Jesus has done in our lives. It's, it's, it is, it's by his grace. <laughs> Keeps my look for. It's by his grace and our faith in grace that we have been saved. But through faith that we must bear fruit. Fruits the opportunities. Fruits, the gifts, and the talents that we've been given. Listen, I remember when I first got here, when, when, when I started paying attention to Brother Mike uh, back in October of last year, I think we had three worship singers, and we had a couple instruments. Look at how many people are up on the stage now and how they're rotating and how God is sending us people that are doing worship. <laughs> Children's workers are increasing. Ushers are increasing. We're seeing more people because it's producing fruit. We're able to go out and we're able to do much more because of what God is doing here and what we're doing is unto the Lord. We have been planted in good soil in the vineyard of the Lord. We have been planted and given the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and to accomplish the will of the Lord. Starting on January 8th, we're going to start Equip 102. Equip 102, for those of you that weren't here in January, uh, we, we've change the name to equip on two but essentially it's i'm going to be teaching you on the gifts of the holy spirit and some of you need to understand you need to come to that class you need to you need to sit through and you need to understand the things that god has given to us we talk about the children of israel and all that the children of israel did but the children of israel were not operating with the spirit of god inside of them it was the spirit of god that was leading them through a pillar but we have the spirit of god inside of us leading us amen Hey, Danny, will you do me a favor and turn that air off on these two sections right there? Some of these people are like, like shivering, and I'm up here sweating, so I don't, you know. But unlike the saints of old, we have the gift of the Father in us. So January 8th, we're going to start the fruits of the Spirit, or the gifts of the, uh, of the Lord, and you need to come, and we need to find out more about what God's wanting to do in our lives. Luke 13, 7 says this, Then he said to the keeper of the vineyard, Look, for three years I've came seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? Jesus is saying to the children of Israel for three years, three times God has made a way. Three times God made a way. Now I told you earlier, think about this church in the last three years. Think about your own life in the last three years. Think about your family and those you hang around the last three years. But now let's get to the heart of this, what Jesus is saying. He's talking about not necessarily three specific years, but he's th talking about three times, three, three uh, specific areas that he's called people to. First, God gave us uh, the, the time through Noah when he says, listen, I'm just going to get rid of everybody, and then I'm going to start all over through the family of Noah. He said, listen, I'm going to do away with this stiff-necked people. I'm going to do away with these people that aren't listening. And through Noah, I'll start anew. So God, that's the first. And then the second time, God made a way through Moses. He brought the children of Israel out. They got stiff-necked again, so he brought the children of Israel out, gave them a land flowing with milk and honey, and again, they became stiff-necked. So the third time, he says this. They didn't get it through Noah. They didn't get it through Moses. So I'll come. And Jesus came. 
Jesus came and he preached truth. He came and he told everybody, I'm the one the prophets have been talking about. Jesus came and he died, and yet still people were stiff-necked and in rebellion. So in this parable, Jesus is sitting there and he's teaching to the Pharisees and to the Sadducees, and he's telling them, he says, three times, I'm the third time. I'm the one that's come. He's not sending another Noah. He's not going to destroy the earth with a flood. He's not sending another Moses. I am he. I'll be the last one that comes. God is saying, listen, it's time to cut the tree down. It's not producing. And Jesus is saying, Lord, give me some time. Give me one more year. The one more year is the dispensation of the church. It's us. We're the dispensation of the church. He's saying, listen, give, us, give me one more dispensation. Let me take the Gentiles, those that have been grafted in, those that are getting their nutrients from me. Let me take them. Let me fill them with my Holy Spirit. And let me, let me use them to reach the world, to bear fruit worthy of repentance. The children of Israel aren't doing it. He's not done with Israel yet, but he's called us the church age. But God asked the question, why does it use up ground? Cut it down. Isaiah 5, verse 5 and 6 says this. And now, please let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take it away, its hedge, and it shall be burned, and break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will lay it waste, and it shall not, shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain, no rain on it. See, Isaiah is speaking of an ungrateful Israel. But John, in Jesus' time, tells us what Jesus is saying as he begins to speak about his church. Because in, in Isaiah, God had spoke to the prophet. He said, listen, they're not getting it. Three disp two dispensations already, and they haven't got it. I just need to destroy. I just need to come back. I just need to do away with them. But then Jesus comes, and then Jesus begins to teach. And Jesus tells us in John 15, 6, he says, If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. See, the vine dresser has grown tired of his repeated efforts, giving the vine chance after chance after chance after chance to produce fruit, but there is none. God is ready. God's ready to return, church. I'm telling you, look around. Look at the seasons. Look at what's going on in our world. Look at what's going on in D.C. Open up your eyes. Open up your ears. God's ready to return. And it's up to the church to declare the truth. It's up to the church to, to proclaim. It's up to the church to start bearing fruit. This is, this is not entertainment. I'm not a very good entertainer. I, I'm not a very good entertainer. Listen, I, I, I love to preach. I told you last Wednesday night, I, I'm used to preaching in places like that off of, off of the beds of pickup trucks or trailers to lost people. I'm used to going into the alleyways and, and, and going to, down to the, the, the highways and the hedges, going to places like Savannah and preaching to people, to the lost, the prodigals. But when God called me in 2019, he said, I'm getting ready to change your mission and your ministry. I'd been, I'd been ministering to those that were bound by drugs and alcohol and, and all kinds of things for years. And the Lord said, yet my church continues to get more and more ignorant of the word. The, the church has, has gotten to the place where they've gotten comfortable, they've gotten cozy, and they're not producing fruit. Listen, this is it, church. He's not going to send another. Jesus isn't coming back. There's no Moses that's coming. It's up to us. He said, and I've given you the Holy Spirit. I've given you the Holy Spirit, and I've given you signs and wonders to do what you need to do. Jesus said, he answered, said, sir, let it alone this year until I dig around it and fertilize it. 
Listen, we're fertilizing by teaching you the word. We're fertilizing by trying to get you to prayer. We're fertilizing by getting you filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Jesus asked the Father for more time to cultivate and to, to fertilize, for more opportunities to allow us to bear fruit. Church, we're it. We're living in the final days. I don't know that 2022 is it, but I don't know that it's not. But I do know this, that the season is at hand. We are being fertilized. We're being filled with the Holy Spirit. We're being taught and empowered the Word of God. The Bible says in John 15, verses 7 and 8, it says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you will bear fruit, so you will be my disciples. We teach the Word. We demonstrate the Word so that the Father will be glorified. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3, 9, it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but he's long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Listen, God's not slack. God promised there's a time coming where he'll return with a trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise. It's coming, church. And if you think for one minute it's not, well, you know, he's been saying that for 2,000 years. I'm just, I'm here to tell you, God is not slack concerning his promises. He said it, he'll do it. It's time for the church to wake up. I can't, I can't control the, the other hundred churches that are, that are in this area. All I can do is tell the one that God sent me to, this is the vineyard God sent me to. I was talking to a pastor here just about a week or two ago, and we were talking about this this uh, LGBTQ, this homosexual agenda, and he's of a certain uh, denomination, and, and, and they're already struggling with that. And I said, my question is this, what are you doing about it? He said, well, listen, he said, I'm just being honest, man. He said, we've got some gay people that come to our church. I said, well, praise God. He said, I said, but are you preaching the truth? He said, well, I just stay away from those topics because I don't want to offend anybody. I don't intend on offending you, but I'm going to tell you the truth. It's wrong. Fornication's wrong. Adultery's wrong. Homosexuality's wrong. Listen, we're never going to bear fruit. We're never going to do what God's told us to do until we start declaring the truth. I believe we're living in that season, and we've, we've got we've to start bearing fruit. We've got to start telling people, Jesus is coming back, and we need to tell people the truth. We need to get people equipped with the Word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 through 16 says, How shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I've taught you this on Wednesday night. The word preacher right there is the word proclaimer. You don't have to be ordained. You don't have to be assembly of God. You don't have to go to seminary to tell people about Jesus. You don't have to be an adult. Listen, we got middle school kids in here. We got high school kids in here. Are you telling people about Jesus? Are you acting like someone that needs to tell somebody about Jesus at your church? Or at your school, rather? Do people know that you're a Christian in school? Or is it just something you do on Sundays and Wednesdays? Moms, dads, what kind of example are we giving? My, my daughter's getting ready to turn 25. We were over in Florence, South Carolina last week. And I was talking to her about some, some things. And she told me, she said, she said, Dad, she said, uh, I promised you this. She said, I told you I'd never do certain things. I'd never lie to you. I'd always be honest. I said, honey, that's all I want you to do, just be honest. And she was asking me some questions about some stuff. Listen, the, Bob, the Bible's true. It's our job to train them up in the way that they should go. And then when they're older, she's older. She's not under my roof. I can't control her. She's off at college now. You, you, your control is only so much. They go off to the military. Your control is only so much. My question is this. What kind of seed are you sowing right now into their lives? What do they see you doing? What kind of fruit are you bearing in your house? Oh, it's going to get better, church. Come on now. Just, just, it's going to get better. How will others know how will others believe? How will others come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ unless we, the church, are bearing fruit and doing what we're supposed to? Church, I believe one more year, one more chance, one more time, the Lord in His great mercy has spared us and He's called us. 
Look at this real quickly. I know it's noon. Real quickly. Matthew chapter, if, if you're, uh, now listen, it don't take that many people, so I'm getting ready to say this. If you need to go, I understand those that need to go, you can go if you need to go. That doesn't mean everybody needs to go. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 through 21 says, You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit and every bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. He says, by their fruits... By our fruits, people will know us. Are we connected to the vine or are we just offering lip service? By our fruits, Jesus will present us to the Father. In Matthew chapter 25, Miss Julie can put it up there for the sake of time. In Matthew 25, Jesus begins to talk to them. He says, listen, he says, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in jail, you came and visited me. When I did these things, and they looked at him and said, Lord, when did we do that to you? When you did it to the least. Then he goes to another group. He says, but you didn't clothe me. You didn't feed me. You didn't come visit me. And when, you, when the Father calls you, He's going to look at you and say, Depart from me, for I never knew you. Listen, not everybody's going to go to Savannah. Not everybody's going to go to the mission field. Not everybody's going to do all the things that, but I'm going to tell you, my, at work, in your family, in your store, I keep saying this over and over again because I'm hoping you'll get it. People are watching. People are looking. People are wanting to see. They got that fish bumper sticker. They wear that cool Life Church t-shirt, but are they really living it? Are they barren or are they fruitful? Come on, Pastor Scott. Is your life fruitful? Are you, are you producing fruit or are you just going through the motions? Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. I'm telling you right now, we've got Facebook Live that's going out. We've got podcasts that are going out. We've got all these things going out. I, it blows my mind how many people it takes to get stuff in ready. But anyways, it, it, we got all this stuff going on. we got all the technology in the world to get the gospel out. What are we doing with it? We've got greater opportunities, church, to minister to people. What are we doing with it? Now more than ever. I heard a guy talk about the population not too long ago. Have you, have you noticed that they're building houses closer together and they're building them up? They're building more apartment complexes than I've ever seen so they can get more people in a smaller space. The population is, is growing like crazy. Listen, we've got opportunities to preach. We've got opportunities to tell people about Jesus. There is no reason... That this church and every other church in this town is not full on Sunday mornings. If we're out telling people, if we're out sharing the good news, if we're telling people our toast testimonies. Luke 13, 9 says, if it bears fruit, well, but if not, then cut it down. Church, are you bearing fruit? Are you doing what you need to do? Are you connected to the vine? I want to be someplace where we're bearing fruit. I want to be someplace where, where we're seeing people saved. I want to be someplace where people have a vision and they're growing and they understand their purpose. I want to be someplace where people are, are begging, Pastor, can we do more? Can we do more? Can we do more mission trips? Can we feed more people? Can we, can we do more things for the community? Catch a hold of it. How many of you know somebody that's lost? And we all know people that are lost, people that need Jesus. What are we doing about it? In December, I'm going to start talking about prayer, and we're going we're to put together some prayer booklets. And I'm going to give you some people in the prayer booklet that I'm going to ask you to pray for. And then I'm going to give you some space for you to write stuff in there to pray for. 
and the Lord's been speaking to me. We're probably going to have a, a box of some sort. I don't know. I got to come up with this, uh, some type of box where you can actually, we'll have some three by five cards and you can write prayer requests and drop it in that box. And then the prayer team that meets on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're going to come in here. And we're going to start praying for those. I don't know what 2023 holds. I know what 2022, where we've come from. I know that the, the God has grown this church. The people's lives have grown. I've seen the fruit. I'm believing 2023 can be the greatest year of Life Church yet. Man, that's two of you. That's good. I, I look forward to. I, I believe that 2023 can be the greatest year of this church, of you individually, if you'll connect to the vine, if you'll do the things that we need to do. Man, I, I just. Listen, equip groups, again, I've said this before, is not just to get you into church one more time. Equip groups is to get you equipped for the fields are white for the harvest, but the labors are few. We need labor. We need a bigger bus to take more people to go do missions. We need a bigger building to bring more people in to do more for the kingdom. I love you. Sometimes you're like, Pastor, I don't know, man. You just, listen, I love you. I believe God sent me here for a purpose. And I want, I want to see your life producing fruit. Jesus said they know you by your fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you bow your heads? Father, thank you again for this word. Thank you. Uh, Lord, it's never my intention. I, I, I. I pray, I study these things out. They're, they're always encouraging to me, but sometimes I think when they come out, Lord, they're just, I don't know. I just pray that you would take this word and that you would sow it into their hearts. That they would begin to ask themselves the tough questions. That they would begin to look in their spiritual mirror and they would begin to ask themselves, am I bearing fruit? Am I doing what God's called me to do? Am I sharing the good news with others? Am I taking every opportunity that's given to me to be the light to a lost and dying world? Father, we need you. We need you in a mighty way, Lord. I pray for those that lifted their hand earlier. I pray that they mean business with Jesus. I pray that they will come and see me after the service is over. And Lord, I just pray that you would begin to stir up a mighty army in this church of men and women, boys and girls that are on fire for the things of God so that we can reach our, 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 our surrounding area into the uttermost parts of the earth with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you again. We love you so much and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, don't move.